Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the Blood Bowl Basics series. In the following videos we will examine the different teams available in Blood Bowl, their strengths, weaknesses, starting lineups, player progression and general tactics. The first team we will cover is the humans. If you are new to Blood Bowl or like a team that can adapt to any playstyle then humans should be your choice. Alongside orcs the human team has been available in every Blood Bowl starter set since the first release because of their versatility. This versatility is the main strength of a human team. It allows a coach to react to whatever uh, opponent they are playing against. Examples would be playing the, bash team, uh, playing the bash game against an elf team or playing the passing and running game against orcs. Their lack of specialisation is also their biggest weakness. Since coaches have a tendency to build the team towards a particular style of play, a human team will only ever be okay at this style of play rather than being great. If you want to focus on the bash game, play Orcs or Chaos. If you want to focus on the agility game, go for Elves or Skaven. Human teams have a tendency to do well at the start of a league but struggle in the higher TV. This is mostly down to a coach trying to fit the team into a certain playstyle. Remember, the key to coaching humans is to maintain your team's ability to adapt to their opponent. A brief overview of the players available to a human coach shows their versatility. You have a variety of positions available and while their stats aren't exceptional, they are decent, allowing you to move the ball as well as get some hits in. You also have access to some of the best skills in the game from the start in block, dodge, catch and sure hands, as well as a big guy in the form of the ogre, and the low price of players allows you to start with a good number of rerolls. With the main skill categories being available along your team, you have good potential for progression even if the team lacks exceptional players or stats. Because of their average stats, a human team is more reliant on their skills, so you need to think about having the right player in the right place at the right time. So let's have a look at each player. The human lineman is the base standard from which the skills and stats of all other players in the game are determined. While having a bunch of average players can seem like a bad thing, it really isn't. As I've said before, the strength of a human team is their versatility. The average stat line allows a human lineman to step up to any role that a coach might want. During a season, human linemen don't need to rely on the random nature of casualties or MVPs to progress. With MA6 and AG3, they can easily carry the ball upfield for a touchdown or throw a successful pass. Normally you want to scale up your other players first, but if a lineman gets a casualty or an MVP, don't be afraid to try and level them up. So, for your skills, the first skill in the lineman should always be block. It increases the player's cost by a mere 20k and essentially turns them into a blitzer. Another good option is wrestle, which is great for taking down blodgers, blitzing a gap in your opponent's line or just taking advantage of your team's speed. Any increase in statistics should always be taken, unless you roll doubles. Stat increases are worth their weight in gold. On doubles, take guard, dodge, while good, isn't great on an AG3 player. Any skills after block should be thought about. Generally you want to pick a, bot, pick a skill that improves the team, but you wouldn't put it on a positional player, kick and tackle are classic examples, as well as dauntless or fend. So to summarise, your first normal skill should be block, Followed by uh, Wrestle, Kick, Tackle, Dauntless or Fend. On doubles you want Guard, followed by Dodge, Sidestep or Stand Firm. Strength and Agility increases are a must unless you're rolling, you're rolling your first double. Armour and Movement should only be taken if the skills you have are compatible. Ok, so now let's look at the Blitzers. On the human team, Blitzers are the stars of the show. They are, without a doubt, the best players on your team Starting with block and access to strength skills, you can build them to be the hard hitters of your team. Their only major drawback is their 90k cost, which is a bit high for what you get. Because your team has players better suited to carrying the ball, they're likely to gain skills slower, so don't be afraid to give them the ball so they can get a few touchdowns. For your first skill, you want to take guard. I think it's essential to any human play as it helps compensate for only being strength 3. Get it on your blitzers and get it as fast as you can. I'd make an exception for one blitzer who you should probably develop as a killer. Let's face it, humans are resilient but since stronger teams will give you a beating, 
you want a guy that can take opponents off the pitch. You want your killer to have the mighty blow and pile on skills, blitz with this guy as often as you can and he'll progress quickly. For your other blitzer, you want one, tough, one guy with tackle to deal with dodge, one with stand firm to keep him in position and another with frenzy to help control the pitch as well as improve your chances of surfing an opponent. After that, throw in some mighty blow to help with your bashing game, strip ball is useful for the occasional time you'll get to use it, but its big purpose is to limit where your opponent would place his ball carrier. Overall, you want to have a good mix of situational skills to help you adapt to your opponent. I can't stress adaptability enough when it comes to humans. On doubles, it really depends on what skills your blitzers already have. Dodge is popular, but only for one or two players. Diving tackle is a good complement for your stand firm blitzer, while sidestep goes well with guard. Jump up is always a good pick too. Personally, I avoid passing skills as your throwers get those on normal rolls. Stat increases are almost always a must. Take movement over take yep, yeah, take movement over armor unless it's a player you really want to keep alive. In summary, on normal rules you want to take guard, followed by tackle, frenzy or stand firm, followed by strip ball or dauntless, except for your killer blitzer, who you want to have mighty blow, followed by piling on. After that, take guard and finish him up with frenzy or tackle. On doubles, take dodge, sidestep, diving tackle or jump up, depending on the player who gets them. Stat increases should always be taken regardless of skills. Take movement over armour, unless it's a player you want to keep alive. Now for the catchers. A lot of coaches view catchers as easy targets for your opponent and avoid taking them. However, if used well, a catcher is an integral part of your team. Despite their name and the catch skill, they're not really good at the traditional role of a catcher, which is to hang around in the opposition's end zone and receive the ball when it's thrown to them for an easy touchdown. Their strength and armour makes them vulnerable, and their agility allows them to be easily marked. A human catcher is better suited to being used as a runner. Give them the ball, stick him in a cage, and have him burst out to score the touchdown. With high movement and a dodge skill, they're great on defence, allowing you to reposition without using rerolls or go for it rolls. The key to using catchers is to keep them protected, keep them out of blitz range, and use their high mobility. Being your primary ball handlers and scorers, catchers can and will scale up fast. Try not to let them do this, as their vulnerability makes it too easy for your opponent to injure or kill them, and you end up having to replace them, losing all their progress. Don't be afraid to skill them up though. Their progression path is good value, and there are 5 or 6 skills they have access to that are easily worth the 20k addition to the player value, since the same can't be said of linemen or throwers. First skill you take, as always, is Block. Block increases any player's survivability by taking the both down result and either cancelling it out or knocking down your opponent. For the second skill, it's a choice between Dauntless or Sidestep. Dauntless makes them a threat to opposing players, especially if you have two Dauntless catchers, as their high movement means they can hit players your opponent might think are safe. If you're thinking down this path, take Wrestle instead of Block, because that combination works better against ball carriers with Block. Don't build all your catchers this way though, as the Wrestle skill will be a double-edged sword when they're carrying the ball. Sidestep works well for catchers, as with do Block and Dodge. It lowers the chances of an opponent knocking you next uh, to another opponent. Whichever of these skills you take as your second, take the other as your third. It's not uncommon for a catcher to gain a third or fourth skill, so for these, I'd recommend Sure Feet to make your catches faster. However, if you're building an attacking ball car uh, carrier, you might want to take Strip Ball. Sure Hands is always a good skill to take um, to make up for their low agility. Diving Tackle, Sidestep and Shadowing are good for building mark a marking player, although you don't really want your catchers in a place where your opponent can hit them. Diving Catch is worth a mention, as it gives a plus one to catching an accurate pass, though the passing game is a bit risky for a human team. On doubles, you take guard. Guard is one of the top skills in the game, and you want it like a fat kid wants cake. Never steal could be a good choice if you're lucky enough to roll a second double. When it comes to stat increases, remember the golden rule of stat increases for humans. Take them all. Favour movement over armour, unless it's a player you really need to keep alive. 
Summary, Blocker Wrestle, followed by Sidestep or Dauntless, followed by Sure Feet or Sure Hands, followed by Diving Tackle or Diving Catch. On doubles, take Guard and Stat Increases whenever you can. Favouring Movement over Armour. Now, on to the Throwers. Throwers can be a bit problematic. Sure Hands is great for a team just getting started, and Pass slightly improves your average ability to play the passing game. But they tend to hog star player points, because it's too easy to score with a player who picks up the ball, and being able to throw better means you'll be making more passes than the rest of your team. This is dangerous because the value of a thrower's progression is generally the worst in your team. Also, passing plays aren't as good as running plays, even amongst elf teams. For a human thrower to get a 3 up on a long throw, he'll need 2 skills, including a double, so generally speaking, using the thrower as a quarterback isn't the best of ideas. <coughs> Treat him as a lineman that can pick up and throw a ball when it's late in the half and you're running low on rerolls. Also, if they've got the ball and they're in a cage, it's a good counter against the leap and strip ball combination part of elf bullshit. There are really only two ways you want to develop a thrower, and it's good to have one of each. The runner and the quarterback. Yep, yeah, I know, I said don't treat throwers as quarterbacks, but it does allow you to have flexibility in your play. Remember. Human teams need to be able to deal with any situation. Personally, I'd concentrate on building a runner first. To build a runner, you want to take block, followed by leader or kickoff return, followed by dump off or nerves of steel. On doubles, take guard, followed by dodge. To build your quarterback, you want to take accurate, safe throw, block, then either kickoff return or hail Mary pass. On doubles, take strong arm, followed by guard or dodge. Finally, with the exception of doubles, take all stat increases prioritising movement over armour. A thrower is the only time I'd say a human should take a double over a stat increase. The quarterback build is probably the only time I'd not recommend a human taking block, as his first skill, as he'll be away from the line of scrimmage and looking to throw the ball rather than hitting the opponent. Finally, we have the big guy of the human team, the ogre. An ogre is an incredibly valuable tool for a human coach. His higher strength is great for those times you want to hit things, especially in other teams' big guy. Use him as a roadblock and a nuisance. Get him to mark several of your opponent's players so that he's taking the hits that your weaker players would be. Because of loner, using him to blitz is a big risk, so don't do it. Nothing removes your team's initiative more than your ogre rolling a 1 for his bonehead when you try to make him blitz. Instead of using him to rake cages, Use a, use a blitzer, then park your ogre next to the ball carrier. It's a surefire way to get your opponent to make risky moves that they normally wouldn't. Also, don't feel obliged to use your ogre every turn. If he's in a good position, leave him alone. You don't want to risk that 1 in 6 chance of him failing his bonehead and losing all his tackle zones. He's not a minotaur or a rat ogre that needs to be involved every turn. If your ogre gets marked, resist temptation. Leave it to the end of the turn to throw a block with him. His mighty blow skill makes it easy for him to pick up some star player points and remove his mark at the end of the turn. Don't try to score with him unless the ball scatters onto him and he manages to catch it. And for Nuffle's sake, never ever, ever try to pass with or to him. Just don't. It won't go well. Ogres are pretty easy to develop. They should pick up star player points through casualties and their progression path is pretty straightforward. On normal rolls, take guard, followed by stand firm, followed by break tackle. After that, it's your choice between pile on, juggernaut, or multi block. It really all depends on how your team is developed and what other coaches in your league are fielding. For doubles, you want to take block. Any big guy with block becomes an absolute titan of terror. If you manage to get a second double, go for pro. It's a free reroll that will help you counter those bonehead rolls. Stat increases for an ogre aren't essential. Take strength if you already have block, don't bother with agility or movement, and if you already have all the skills you want, take armour. So, now we've covered the player skills, and when to take them, how you should be using, we'll cover the starting rosters. Because of the flexibility of humans, there's no real bad way to, to, to your starting roster. It really just comes down to whether or not you want an ogre. Personally, 
I start with the owner. His high, his high cost means that it will take a few games before you can afford him and it will be harder for him to catch up with the rest of the team. Either way, you want to have 4 blitzers, 4 linemen and 3 rerolls. After that, the only difference comes from taking the ogre. If you take the ogre, you can take 1 thrower and 1 catcher. If you don't, you can take 2 throwers and 2 catchers. Either way, we'll leave you with a bit of spare change, so keep that to one side so you can pick up an apothecary after your first match. From here on, it's simply a case of adding reserves or replacing injured players. So, that's the end of my guide on humans. I hope you found this helpful, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, or donate to my Patreon to help this channel grow and produce better quality videos for you to enjoy. And the next team I'll be covering will be the Orcs.